Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another video on my channel. Today we will be creating bullets in Blender and I will be showing you guys the quickest and the easiest way to create beautiful looking bullets and after watching this video you will be able to create any bullet which you want of your own choice. If you are new here or haven't subscribed already then please subscribe and if you want the finished blend file you can get it on my Patreon as well as on my Gumroad page. Well back to Blender. Delete the cube and the lamp. Drag and drop the reference image. I will be providing its link in the description. Alt G and Alt R to clear all transformations. Rx90 to rotate. Numpad 1 to go to the front view. Move the image upward and turn down the transparency. Depth to front. First we will be modeling the 9mm bullet. The reference is a little bit distorted but uh, it's totally gonna be okay. Shift right click to put the 3D cursor right at the bottom. Then Shift A, bring in a cylinder. Scale it down. Turn on X-ray view. Try to match the cylinder with the reference. While modeling we will be sticking to only one end but uh, keep in mind the other end should be as close as possible to the reference as well. Now tap to go to the edit mode. Select the bottom vertices. GZ to move them down. Try to match it with the sides only. The image is kinda distorted so we can just aim to match it with the middle curve. Now E to extrude and then scale it down. Actually move it upward a bit. Now E to extrude and then S to scale it outwards. Extrude again. E to extrude and then S to scale it outwards. Now E to extrude again. Alt select this edge loop and GZ to move it down a little bit. Now we will fix the bottom part. Alt select the bottom vertices. E to extrude then scale it down, extrude it upwards one more time, extrude then scale, go to front view with x-ray view enabled, extrude it downwards and scale it down a little bit as well. Time to model the top now. Select the top vertices, GZ, move them up so it matches the side. Now E to extrude, left click. Try to scale it till you reach the edge of the bullet. Now extrude it downwards. But one thing we have a face inside which we don't want. Actually select the background image and uncheck perspective. Yeah now it's not annoying and we can actually see the face I was talking about. But uh, too bad we gonna delete it now. Alt left click to select the whole edge loop. Enable X-ray view to view it from the front. Now shift D to duplicate. Scale it down while holding shift to scale it in small increments. Now E to extrude. Extrude it again and then scale it down to match it with the reference. Try to have even extrudes. But when you are getting close to the top you will be noticing a bigger curve so then try to have smaller extrudes. And when you are too close to the top try to have a couple of edge loops to maintain the shape. I am going fast but uh, you can have even one more edge loop right about here and try to make the top even more smaller if you can. So what you can do for the gap? You can either press F, it will fill in a plane for you but it's an angon and you don't want an angon out this much in the open. We can have it at the bottom, it's straight but I don't like it up here. Like I said, it won't be looking bad and you can use it if you want but still there is another trick as well. Delete the face. Alt select the top vertices, go to face and grid fill. Select the middle vertex, turn on proportional editing, one to go to front view, press G, then scroll the mouse wheel down to make the circle of influence smaller, then Z to move the vertices upward. I'm not gonna focus on this step a lot but uh, you can take your time because uh, it may create weird artifacts as well but it all can be fixed. Now it's up to you, either you want a flat face by pressing just F or you wanna use the grid fill, totally your choice. Now tap to go to the edit mode, select any vertex, press L to select all the connected vertices, press P, separate by selection. Now we have two separate meshes, select the bullet, go to the modifiers tab and select subdivision surface. Damn the top is looking too bad right now, wait I'm gonna quickly fix it. Yeah, now it's looking much better. 
check auto smooth if you haven't already checked it after using shade smooth well now for the bullet casing go to the modifiers tab and select bevel amount of 0.1 is doing an awesome job here i'm not going to increase the segments to 2 because uh, i'm going to clean it manually myself but yeah you can see these lines actually what it's doing is that it's beveling every edge loop so it's beveling these edges as well which is creating these weird lines we can simply fix it by switching limit method to angle now bring in a subdivision modifier you can see it needs a lot of work now so back to edit mode control r to bring in an edge loop oh turn off proportional editing if you have it enabled as well press double g to slide it i don't want it too close to the edge this much is working fine for me now i want this edge loop very close to the corner to make it look sharp enough now it's the same for the bottom control r bring it downwards yeah right about there now i'm gonna bring even more edge loops and fix wherever i feel it needs an edge loop Yeah, we can put some of them below as well. Yeah, it's looking much better now. Our one bullet is done. Now it's time to model the next one. I won't be going step by step for this one because the process is much the same now. Now the same. Shift right click to put the cursor. Shift A. Bring in a cylinder, scale it down, match it to the reference. Tap to go to the edit mode, select the bottom vertices, bring them down, E to extrude and then scale it down, extrude again, scale it up, just like we did earlier. Again extrude, then scale it up again, extrude it down again. and the rest is pretty much the same for the bottom part now select the top vertices and repeat the same process of extruding and scaling nothing new is going to happen even amount of extrudes in the beginning and tighter extrudes when you're too close to the top then press f to bring in a face or use the grid fill it's totally your choice Shade smooth. Auto smooth. Tap to go to the edit mode. Select a vertex. L to select all the connected vertices. Press P, separate by selection. Use a subdivision modifier on the bullet. Oh, I accidentally used it on the bullet casing first. It's okay. Now use a bevel modifier and move it upwards. Switch limit method to angle. Now a subdivision modifier for the bullet. And now we will fix the shading issues by bringing in more edge loops.
Well, we are done now. The bullets are totally looking awesome. Select the bullet and then the casing. Press Ctrl P. Set parent to object. Do the same for the other bullet as well. And the modeling process is done. Now it's time for shading. Go to the shading tab. Click on new. We will be going step by step so all of you can understand what we are doing, what's going on and especially so it doesn't feel rushed. First of all, press shift A, bring in a noise texture, connect color to base color. If you look at our casing now, we see a lot of colors because of the noise texture we just created. We are trying to create dirt or moss or anything that's gonna help us make our bullet look messy and not totally polished. And for that we can play with the noise settings. I'm gonna reduce the scale to something like 0.6. You can see we have big straight colored lines now. Increase detail to 13. And set distortion to minus 0.2. But it's not looking good. Control T to bring in mapping and the texture coordinate nodes. If you can do it, then you have to activate the node wrangler add-on first from the add-on settings to use this feature. Now what we're gonna do is to switch generated to object. You can see it's looking much better now. I'm also gonna increase the scale to 1.2 in the mapping node. And yeah, it's looking much better. Now make some space, then shift A, search for bump. Connect normal to normal. Now connect color to height. You can see we have bump, but it's a lot. And it's kind of is looking more like a rock texture. So what we're gonna do now is to reduce its strength to like 0 0.03. We can see a little change only, but uh, we are creating a bullet. It can't be that rough. And now for the color, shift A, bring in a color ramp. I already made a color hex code from the models I created earlier, so I don't have to play with the colors a lot in this video. And the big news, I will be giving its link in the description as well. You just have to copy a code, click on the color, go to hex and paste in the code. Click on plus to add another slider. Again, copy and paste in the hex code. Do it once again and we are done with the color. You can now play with the middle slider to go for a look that you want. I'm gonna place it right about here. Now we will increase metallic to like 0.8 and specular to 0.8 as well. Decrease the roughness to 0.35. I actually like the look. Now for the bullet, click on new. Choose the material we just created. Click on 2 to make this material unique. Bump strength to 0.2 and change the color from the color hacks. The upper two colors are the same. All we need is to change the third color. Well, it's looking pretty awesome now. For the other bullet, we just have to use the materials we just created and we are done. We can even play with the sliders.
actually for the bullet i like the slider more about here and i have also checked it by connecting noise factor to the color ramp it's also something if you like this look you can use it as well You can even change the scale to like uh, 0.3 or 4. And if you want a more polished brand new look, then make the middle color lighter and the dirt and moss will get dim. Like I said, it's your choice now, it totally is your thing. How you want your bullet to look like? Well, I'm loving the final result. If you got your desired result as well, then give this video a thumbs up and give a comment as well. Well, this is it for today. I won't be talking about creating the actual scene, but, but if you have been following my work, I know it won't be a big problem for you guys. In the end, a big thanks to all of you, to all of my patrons, to all of you guys who've been checking out my work on Gumroad, and to all of my subscribers, thanks again. But if you are new here or haven't subscribed already, and loving my work then please subscribe so you're always updated of my new upcoming videos well see you next time take care happy blending